Welcome back to Domains 21. And we are here today with Elaine Pulker from the Open University, who will be talking with us about moving your language teaching online, an open resource for sharing good practice. Elaine, welcome to the Domains 21 track. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to this talk. Um, so I'm Hélène Polka. I am a senior lecturer in French in the School of Languages and Applied Linguistics at the Open University and uh, also open educator, open researcher. And um, I'm here today to uh, give you a little talk about a toolkit that we have recently developed uh, to support uh, teachers to move their um, language teaching online. So the presentation will cover different aspects. I will try to answer certain questions. So um, hopefully we will uh, clarify how the toolkit came about and how it was developed, uh, what it contains and who it is for. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of data that we have collected so far about its usage. And I want to talk at the end about how the toolkit uh, encourage open practices in the teaching of modern languages. And at the end of this presentation, I have also added further resources that uh, you might find useful, uh, essentially resources developed by the Open University. So now a bit of background to the toolkit. Uh, so as we all know, uh, a year ago, we all went into lockdown. Um, March 2020, uh, all the teachers in the world had to pilot to online teaching. And um, during the, the first lockdown, uh, the School of Languages and Applied Linguistics um, at the OU were approached by a wide range of colleagues and friends um, in the UK and much beyond uh, for tips and recommendations for teaching, um, teaching online. So uh, a group of us, as, as you can see us here, um, thought, well, we've got something, to, we've got to do something about this. Um, and we pulled together all the, um, you know, the principles and the experience and the expertise that we have acquired in the last 20 years or, or so of uh, teaching languages online. And we designed um, a, a toolkit. So um, the toolkit is um, essentially a set of principles um, and, and guidance uh, for language teachers uh, in the sector of higher education um, and for anyone anyone in the world. So what we're trying to do is to provide uh, practical advice about how teachers can create an interactive online environment uh, for their students and uh, to support learning uh, online. So the, the toolkit contains nine different uh, help sheets, if you like, um, nine pieces of advice. Um, and of course, it's an open resource, so it can be adapted, it can be repurposed, it can be translated, uh, it can be shared by anyone uh, in, in, in the world. Because we totally... Um, we're totally aware that uh, this toolkit is based on experience at the Open University, which is a completely distance education institution. And so we uh, are absolutely aware that um, many universities will be in different setup. And so some of the uh, principles, some of the approaches that we uh, recommend in this toolkit might be adaptable and might not be, but anyone can do um, anything they like uh, with a kit. So uh, what does it contain? We have um, decided <laughs> to limit it to uh, nine 
sections. It could have been a lot bigger than that, but uh, we thought as an emergency, what are the main challenges that teachers are going to be faced? So the first one is how to create a, a classroom online. Then we move to how to create an online community. So we talk about um, encouraging students to um, build a learner community. Um, number three is developing your teaching on uh, voice online, which is something that is particularly specific to online teaching, something that uh, teachers may not have to do necessarily when they teach face to face. Uh, the teaching the four language skills online is something that is specific again to language teaching. So we cover how to do listening, uh, speaking, reading and writing. Another uh, important aspect is how to facilitate uh, a synchronous language tutorial online uh, for, for most people. Uh, for most teachers, that would have been the first, uh, you know, the pandemic would have been their first uh, time that they have to do uh, a, a class uh, um, live uh, online. Um, an important aspect to uh, online is maintaining motivation. Uh, so we um, give quite a, a lot of tips uh, and recommendations about that. Um, number seven is developing assessment strategies. So we thought perhaps um, teachers would need to um, have ideas on how to assess um, online, assess languages online. Using a learning management system is obviously uh, an important point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then reflecting on the blend that is best for your learners. So um, what we did, um, so we launched the, the toolkit in October, not 21, <laughs> time flies. Um, and I have got the uh, link to the toolkit here. Um, so we launched the toolkit uh, in collaboration with our partner, the University Council for Modern Languages in the UK. Um, and we also uh, delivered um, a few workshops for individual institutions following the launch. Some we were approached by, for example, the University of Loughborough Language Centre and University of Granada. We also did some presentations at the um, Global uh, Open um, Research Network seminar and a few presentations internally uh, at, for example, teaching enhancement seminars. And, and we um, launched also the toolkits through uh, Twitter. And we've had quite a few responses uh, through uh, that campaign. Right, so um, 185 participants uh, at the two launch events from 36 UK universities uh, and seven universities in four other uh, European countries. Um, and we asked uh, teachers to tell us about the experience of online teaching that they had so far, and only 10% uh, declared that they had taught online before the start of the pandemic. 28% mm, said that they received some form of training for online teaching. And um, among the, the participants, 66% uh, were teaching online completely and 28% at the time um, had some sort of uh, blended teaching, so they had a little bit of face-to-face. Um, uh, -face. And 88% planned to use the toolkit after the, the launch event. Um, during the, again, at the, at the start of the launch, we asked um, teachers how they felt about online teaching. And this is what uh, came up. So the big two uh, feelings, if you like, that came through was frustration and challenging. Uh, but it was quite um, reassuring to see that um, 
uh, they felt that uh, it was enjoyable and interesting and flexible uh, and also creative and hopeful. So uh, despite the fact that uh, a few says that said that uh, it was tiring um, and it was exhausting, there were mixed feelings, but uh, through the conversation, it transpired that there was a lot of hope. Okay, so um, the, to date, the toolkit has been visited um, 4,009 times, and the most popular help sheets are, well, the most popular help sheet is the creating an online classroom, um, which is not surprising. Um, that you know we decided to put that as number one because um, in our experience uh, this is the most challenging aspect of online teaching um, making sure that uh, students feel uh, secure and confident and comfortable in their new environment uh, after that is the teaching language the teaching of the language skills that uh, is important for uh, language teachers so help sheet four comes second and then maintaining motivation so these are the three um that are the most uh, um, read the most downloaded and then developing teaching voice creating an online community facilitating a tutorial developing assessment strategy and not surprisingly using a learning management system at the uh, coming last uh, because as we were talking to uh, teachers they said that it's not really um, important to them and certainly not in, them, in their power to um, create or manage a learning management system. So just a few quotes here, um, three nice quotes that came up uh, during the, uh, the, the launch events. One said, one of the main challenges I found when teaching online is the lack of social contact among students. I found the section creating an online community particularly helpful. Then um, it is a very useful tool to everyone that has never taught online before. It gives good explanation on how to approach online teaching and also provides with very good advice to solve common problems in that context. And thank you very much for creating this toolkit and for the launch events in October. I found it really helpful and I received loads of tips in a, a stressful moment. So this was um, nice, nice to hear, but also um, reassuring that um, teachers found the kit helpful and that they could actually see something that was of use to them in their particular context. So now I'd like to talk a little bit more about um, whether the toolkit uh, fostered some fostered open uh, practices. So it's a very recent um, resource and we haven't uh, got a lot of data and we haven't uh, analyze the, the, the data that we've got in, in depth. But we can certainly um, make some preliminary um, conclusions and um, I'd like to share that with you, with you now. So the uh, Times Higher Education Campus Digital Teaching Survey uh, report revealed that 36% of the respondents had uh, no experience of online teaching. And for those who had, uh, who had a, a reasonable amount of, of experience uh, or a lot of experience of online teaching prior to the pandemic, this was often asynchronous only. And that's what I was saying earlier. Our teachers, um, the, the, the teachers we, we talked to during the launch for most of them said um, that they had never done a live uh, tutorial before. They may have uh, used email, forums, um, asynchronous tools, but um, you know, they'd never taught with Zoom uh, before. Um, the analysis of the, the chat uh, discussions um, sh show that, Actually, um, 
whether you teach face to face or or online, you have uh, absolutely uh, profound beliefs about uh, the way you you want or you think it's best to teach to teach languages. So, for example, um, some novice teachers were uh, asking what to do when students do not prepare um, the work in advance. They say, you know, how on earth can you conduct a, a tutorial uh, if they don't? Um, if they don't look at the vocabulary that we set or, or, or whatever. Um, so there were also conversations about uh, the use of camera and the use of the chat. Uh, and this is also a very important aspect of uh, language teaching. It's about communication, it's about interaction. So um, they were quite uh, frustrated by the fact that uh, students were very reluctant to put this, their, their, their camera. And something else that came up about, you know, uh, beliefs about teaching, uh, they, were, they were asking, um, uh, they were wondering if um, they had to correct all the grammar mistakes that were in the chat, for example. So these conversations um, were extremely um, revealing because they really pointed to particularly particular aspect of, of language teaching, which is true whether you are uh, face to face or, or, or online. What uh, was reassuring was that um, there was uh, some show, some signs of, of readiness to embrace the new teaching environment and uh, fairly um, fairly open mind about it. Some challenges uh, were raised, and um, there are similarities in the challenges that we um, uh, came across like 20 years ago when we um, started to teach online at the OU, but there were some slight uh, variations. So in terms of challenges, uh, some noted that um, they had to, they say, animate uh, the class more. Uh, what they mean, uh, of course, is that uh, the tutor becomes uh, more of a facilitator online uh, and have to encourage students to participate um, more than in a, in a traditional classroom. They also uh, notice that uh, the preparation is crucial. So um, that, was, that was nice to hear. They mentioned what they called uh, pre-tutorial tasks. Um, and flipped classrooms. So naturally, uh, without having much training, um, uh, teachers realized that uh, this is particularly important uh, online, but also a challenge because um, most of these people are part-time and they don't have uh, enough time. And so the heavy uh, preparation is, is, is an issue. Um, also, they realized that um, online teaching um, exacerbates disparities between students and also um, show mixed abilities in the language a lot more um, uh, than in face-to-face. -face. Um, and they also said that the balance between activities in plenary and in breakout rooms um, is is uh, super important. Um, I think that what's transpired what transpired also is that um, the teachers are much much more inclined to uh, share good practice uh, since the the, the pandemic, uh, and there was. Um, some teachers who provided links to resources and uh, they shared tools that they have been using successfully, for example, Padlet. And there were also conversation about the use of uh, proctoring software, uh, for example. So um, in the case of one um, uh, department, uh, they, they said that they were going to create a platform for sharing their own resources and have regular meetings to discuss um, online, how the online teaching is progressing. So all in all, there were some very positive um, comments, uh, despite the challenges. Well, thanks again for joining us for this uh, episode of Domains 21. And uh, we look forward to more information and hopefully a, a brighter future for teaching online. <laughs> Thank you.
Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> nom nom nom.